Thank you, New York City Comic Con Sunday. Make some noise. Let me hear you guys. I am thrilled to be hosting this very entertaining panel. My name is Mark Ellis. I'm a comedian. I host a show called Schmoes No, and I'm the host of Movie Talk on Collider Video's YouTube channel. And I think that I speak for a lot of people who are here today, fans of entertainment in general, that we love a good story, we love good comic books, and we're also pretty big fans of a little group called Black Eyed Peas. This panel is about Masters of the Sun, and it gives me great pleasure, without further ado, to introduce to you your panel today. First, make it loud, make some noise for Mr. Will. I am, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, keep that applause going for Taboo. And you also know this gentleman from Black Eyed Peas, Apple D. Yeah, make it loud! <laughs> I didn't expect a little moonwalk that early in the day. That was pretty impressive. That was the worst one. <laughs> uh, the next gentleman, uh, you guys probably know him from his work on such comics as Spider Man and Deadpool, and he is one of the artists on Masters of the Sun. Welcome, Damian Scott, everybody. <laughs> and last but not least, a co-writer on Masters of the Sun. Please welcome my buddy, Ben Jagendorf, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> yeah. This is the coolest dressed panel that I have ever moderated. Masters of the Sun is the brainchild and the creation of a lot of different elements coming together. And Will, I want to throw it to you first because this thing is, is your baby. You, uh, you're, you're one of the people who got this movement started and now to see it come to fruition, that's got to be pretty exciting for you. Yeah, you know, um, five years ago when um, I was just brainstorming on wanting to tell stories and you know, transition from just making music and a couple of videos, I wanted to go a little deeper and, and um, build worlds. And one of the worlds um, was uh, Masters of the Sun. And um, I'm so happy that it's, you know, manifested and it's real now. Um, the book is out now, Amazon, your local comic book store. Right, so thank you, Marvel. You know, it's a dream come true to be working with Ben and Damien, and you know, like Apple always says, this is, uh, this is like our first album, you know? So when we did our first album in 1998, it really took our whole life to make that. And it seems like we, it took our whole life to make Masters of the Sun and all the folks that participated. And once again, thank you Marvel for seeing um, and believing in this pro project and, and publishing our, our book. Yeah, Taboo, I, yeah, you, I mean, you're, you get to see, it's a, it's a thing you have in your head and then all of a sudden you're holding it and it's physical and there's the Marvel logo right there. I mean, that's, that's kind of a, it's, it's like you're, you made it to another level in entertainment. Well, um, you know, just the first time I saw this, Will presented it to me and I remember, um, you know, seeing it and it was just as a collector, I appreciated it because of the thought process that went into it, the illustration, it was just something of beauty that we needed the best partner and I suggested Marvel. You know, I had a relationship with Daniel Fink and you know, it all worked out. So thank you to Marvel for, for believing in this project. Thank you to everybody up here for believing in the, in the, the next stage of our, of our life, creating content, uh, stepping outside of music, but you know, looking at, at this and saying to ourselves, this is like a dream come true for us as collectors, but also as fans of, of comic books and Marvel. Yeah, Apple, when you have something in your head like this, but it's not being expressed through music, does that, does that, do you find that a little intimidating or do you find it kind of refreshing that it's a different form of, of getting a message across? Um, just like Will said, you know, um, this, this project is like making our first album, you know? It takes all the dedication, the, 
the the artwork, the um, just the details. You know what I mean? It 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 like the first album take our whole life to make, and uh, this album it took the same amount of uh, like uh, motivation and dedication and just researching and um, and it's just great growing up in the Philippines, uh, comic books and. Uh, uh, comic books and Marvel has been a big instrument in my life. Like, I, I think it's, that's how I learned how to speak English, too. I mean, the print was, like, small, but I still read it, like, really close, you know? <laughs> and, um, yeah, man, and, you know, we got a lot of Filipinos, uh, il illustrator in a Marvel family, so it's all family right here. Yeah. <laughs> I want to ask, uh, I want to hit it back to Will for a minute while we're talking about the piece, because you guys are so famous for your music. Do you ever find that the community is very welcoming for you guys to try a new avenue like this? Or do you, do you find that people just want to put you in a box and say, well, no, you're musicians. You couldn't possibly come up with a comic book like this. I, I don't mind boxes. So if, if someone puts me in the box or us in a box, I, I can't wait to get in that box and then kick it from the inside and turn it into a circle. <laughs> <laughs> so they're not going to identify it. Once you put me in a box, I'm going to turn it into a circle, so you'll see. So, and, but that just, you know, you know I, I don't like to, you know, let what one would think would intimidate me or us and allow them to succeed. So what you do and how you contribute and the attention and the detail and the love that you put into it, you know, real recognizes real. And you know, we, this isn't an okie doke project for us. It wasn't something like, hey, let's... Let's go to Comic Con and you know <laughs> bring forth a new graphic novel and the papers whack and it looks like you didn't really care, you know. So and and the things that we're we're going to reveal later on in this this little panel shows you just how much we care and how much detail and you know newness that we put into the Masters of the Sun. It's a lot more than just a comic book. Um, but what I'll ask is uh, Ben, the co-writer, when you yeah. got approached about this project, what are, your, what are your initial thoughts and takes and maybe hesitations, or share with us the excitement that you had when you first heard about it? Well, it's funny, the, the first introduction I had to Will you know, was through a, a mutual contact we had, and uh, this was based on a script that Will had written um, before. And, I wasn't a big fan of zombies, I'm just going to say, so it was like... I mean, who doesn't love zombies? I mean, but I, was, I, I wasn't, I was like, oh my god, there's so much zombie stuff out there, okay. And then when I read the script that Will had done, I was like, no, these aren't zombies. These are the soulless, like these are people without frequency, and this is a music project. And that to me, like, made me go, this is exciting, because this is something that, like, speaks to me. I mean, I've been a music, like, I got into film and TV cause of music. Like, that really was my focus. I wanted to write film score and stuff. So this was like creating something that was an experience more than just like, oh, we're just taking a comic book. I mean, the layers in this and the layers that Will had put in and the layers that Damien and I were able to weave in with Will and, like, this whole team, I mean, it's, it, it's a special project. And I have to say, like, the way it came, like, it was funny. When we first met, I was like, either this is going to be the biggest thing or it's gonna be a coffee table book. Like, it's not gonna be in between. It's gonna be either huge and beyond, and it's beyond, I have to say, it's like, this is beyond my wildest dreams, this project. Like, I'm just so blessed to be a part of it, and I have to say thank you to, to everybody, and thank you guys, like, get this book, because it's dope. I mean, I support it. <laughs> this is yeah, I mean, I, when I was lucky enough to check it out this weekend, it's, it does something that you actually see similar themes in previous works that involve zombies. If you even go all the way back to Night of the Living Dead, which was much more than just a zombie movie. I mean, the cultural and the sociological significance of that movie, and you see that attempted with other current fare involving zombies, whether it's Walking Dead or 28 Days Later, whatever it is, and to see those themes resonate and have this be much more than just something that's entertaining, that actually has a message to it without beating you over the head. I think you guys hit that fine line yeah. of achieving something without trying to preach to an audience. You're just showing them what the world is like and what the world could be. Well, I think that was really the goal. Like, cause again, like I said, I was not hyped on like zombies, brains, all that. My whole thing was like, we, have, or we are frequencies. Like as human beings, we have frequency. You know, supposedly they say we're eight hertz and the earth is tuned to eight hertz and our body has. So the idea that a zombie doesn't have a frequency, it has no soul. 
So that was the whole concept. Like something without a soul, what does that mean? So that was the idea. I mean, they're more like Chinese vampires. Like they kind of suck the soul out. And yeah, it's not like one of the zombie things where it's like you get bit by a zombie and then you're a zombie and they go biting. It's not one of those things. <laughs> no. you know? But it's, it, 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 it takes, the story takes like, it borrows from reality. It borrows from conspiracy. It borrows from, you know, uh, Egyptology and, and myths. Um, and it, and it, it takes place in 1980 where the birthplace of hip hop is the Bronx and two of the um, Puerto Rico. Yeah. Boogie down Bronx. Um, so two, um, these, 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 without telling you the whole story, they travel to LA and they see that Crips and Bloods are fighting over territory and selling a drug. Um, and where we borrow from the 80s is that actually happened. Hip hop spawned from the Bronx, came to the West Coast. There was a drug, that drug was crack. There were crackheads. In this book, there is a drug and crackheads are zombies, but not in, <laughs> right? So we're borrowing from that side of culture, right? So we're, 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 we're but we, we've put fantasy around it and it goes deep when we're trying to find the source, when it's all coming from. And, and with that, you gotta check out the book because it's heavy and like, you know, Awesome myth, awesome conspiracy theories, great freaking like Egyptology history that you know we're, we're borrowing from, and uh, I can't wait for you to check it. There's aliens and stuff. <laughs> yeah. So we took Crips and Bloods, hip hop, zombies, and aliens, <laughs> <laughs> and the CIA. It's like they put a whole lot of cool stuff into a Vitamix and just put it on the highest speed and turn it out. And when you read it, you're right. I mean, you also learn something about the power of language and how language and words and the way we use them can be used or abused. And then you put it to art and the magnificent job that Damien Scott did in this book. D. Scott. Woo, 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 D. Woo, 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 woo. <laughs> striking visuals I've ever seen. So Damien, when you get approached about something like this, how does this gig compare to the previous works that you've done in the world of comic books? I mean, this was different because it's hip hop and that's more close to, you know, where I'm from and, you know, what I'm really trying to do with my career. And it was really an opportunity to like flex muscles that I probably couldn't do with the bigger guys, with like, you know, Marvel or DC or whatever, with the Batmans and Supermans. And it has so many elements that were just right in key with what I'm about. You know, I'm about Egyptology, I'm about music, I'm about, you know, creativity and its power to change and affect lives, you know what I mean? So like, it was like, forget the money, it was like the purpose was all about, the purpose was more than the worth of getting paid for the job, you know what I mean? It was dope. It's like, so cool to see you guys up here be such like a team and be united as one. Like I've never seen a panel. You guys literally film each other while y'all are talking. Like you care <laughs> about what you're saying to each other. And I'm just curious as to the team aspect and the collaborative unity that you guys brought to this. I mean, because this really isn't just one person's thing. This is, this is clearly a collection and a team coming together, Will. Yeah, so, you know, when, some people say, like, start it from the bottom, now we're here, right? I love that saying, right? I love that saying, start it from the bottom, now we're here. This book is not that. It isn't starting from the bottom, now we're here. We started from nothing. This didn't exist, the characters didn't exist, the concept did not exist, and we took these ideas and made them real. So, Damien, thank you so much for, like, you know, digging into your soul and, 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 and actualizing characters that I had no face to when, we were, when, I, when I wrote the screenplay with Nier, you, you brought life to them. So this is not a company. So no one told us to do this. This was not commissioned from a corporation or a media company. This is like, yo, I wanna do this. You wanna do this? <laughs> so when, you, when, when things start from nothing, then you know the bond that you're going to have, the appreciation that you're going to have, you know, is 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 beyond. You don't. That is rare. That's like when we started the Black Eyed Peas. Yo, you want to do this group? You want to do that? Oh, what you doing on Fridays? Oh, I got a son. I'm going to Disneyland. That's what Taboo worked. Me and Apple didn't have a job. Apple worked at a, at a at AMC. <laughs> but we just had. We just wanted to do it. Like, yo, let's do this. And it's the same here with 
you know, we got a new crew. Black Eyed Peas is like five members now when it comes to telling stories. Um, and, I, and I can't wait to do yeah. the next and the next. But more importantly, I can't wait for you guys to see how we took it to the next. Because boy, did we. Facts. Facts. Oh, by the way, Damien, he draws every single second of the day. Since he was nine years old. Yeah. Yeah, so, pretty you know much. I mean, to really focus on the characters on this one, you imagine he has thousands of characters. And uh, just to be focused on this one, you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's amazing how he did it. And it's cool to be able to bounce ideas and just like, what's next? How do we continue to, to just evolve, um, you know, and just feed off of each other and kind of like mix and blend the worlds? Because, I mean, you know, we've been collecting comic books and toys and just being part of Comic-Con culture for a long time. And now just to, to be able to, to bounce ideas off of an amazing graffiti artist who's an, a great illustrator. You know, we come from hip hop culture as well, b-boys, graffiti. So it just, it made sense. So we're just very, very honored to be able to bring this new uh, experience. It's rare that we get an opportunity like this. Like, like comic books and hip hop, I think is a long, long, long time coming. It's been coming since damn near the beginning of hip hop. Yep. You know what I mean? Yep. So like, this is just like rare and it's gold and Gold like the eye on the bag, like yeah. <laughs> go out and get That's it. That's your son. Will, uh, you mentioned and, and you've hinted as much in this panel that uh, this isn't just an experience that you're going to pick up and read and then you're done with it. There's, there's more aspects to this. Do you, do you hear to enlighten this audience as to exactly what they can expect? Yeah, so, um, you know, I, we have so much respect for, for Comic-Con and graphic novels and comic book culture, Marvel, that we wanted to add to the community, not just hop on a bandwagon because it's cool. We wanted to like contribute. And um, our contributions in the beginning were like, ask, you know, um, ambitious. And I think we overdid what it is we sought out to do because we have so many people that came on board to add um so when you get the book the book's out now and holiday season you know apple has a new phone out google has a new phone out and ar seems to be the thing this year and so we 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 made sure that we wanted to add to you know what what the big phenomenon this year is and that is to have this book augment augmented right so it's arable so you put your phone and the book comes to life so um, I, I, I'll, I'll show you what that is here. Demonstration. You guys want to see that? <laughs> so yeah, so we've been working. So when I say like we did this from nothing, like I think this is the reason why Marvel was blown away because we had everything thought out. So. Um, and I'll tell you the people that collaborated on it after I show it to you. So I'm gonna first show you the first page. First page. Are we up there? There we go. So, oh, this one's exciting. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Once there was a time of harmony, a time long before the Anunnaki, when black was known as the powerful word, one of divine property, and that was always heard. But then came the creatures, dropped in from the sky, guards from above, bearing a lie. The black was told that they were all dark, all dark as evil, and they bore the mark, the mark of the foulest, most wicked beasts, and they would have to sacrifice in order to feast. The feast was for them to become gods, to sell out their families, and put their people at odds. Right. Since their man and so Then you go to the next page, check this out, boom, like this. Page. Wait, 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 let me start over, let me start over, let me start over. It's not a good part, I can't read it. Yeah, so dope. Since their emancipation, African Americans have made great progress. The Harlem Renaissance gave rise to jazz, art, and literature. During World War II, 
one and a half million African Americans gave their service. The Civil Rights Movement had many noble accomplishments, but progress was quickly cut short with events such as the assassinations of their cultural leaders, Martin Luther King Jr. and Malcolm X, the dissipation of the Black Panther Party, and increasing unemployment rate in the ghettos which led to the epidemic of drugs, crime, prostitution, and the collapse of the family structure. By the early 1980s, the reality of life in the ghetto was harsh, but the world didn't know about it because the African Americans had no voice. Hip hop gave them back their voice. So, if you guys were wondering, the two voices that you had heard, one was the hip hop god, Rakim. Whoa! Who? The oh. who, who. who oh. plays, who, who, who reads the, the part of Master Son, and the narrator for the whole entire book is Stan Lee. Damn! Woo! I'm just saying, I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> Whoever would have thought Stan Lee and Rakim? <laughs> so I could, I, could, I could name the cast. Would you like to know the rest of the cast of the people who put this on the book? Rakim. Boom. Stan Lee. Boom. Jason Isaacs. Boom. Boom. Queen Latifah. Boom. Boom. Rosario Dawson. Boom. <laughs> KRS One. Boom. Boom. Slick Rick. <laughs> Boom. Ice T. Boom. Rayquan. Boom. Red Man. Woo. Mary J. Blige. Boom. Eric B. Pete Rock. Boom. Michael Rappaport. Boom. Oh. Snoop Dogg. Yeah. Wow, wow, wow. Jamie Fox. Boom. Yay. And two secrets that I don't want to reveal, but you're going to scream. I'm not going to reveal them, but you're going to scream. <laughs> <laughs> There's two secrets that I don't want to tell yet. But, I mean, I mean I'm just saying. So, but it's pretty freaking awesome because you can go to, to a page like this. How about that for some rules? Music man, there ain't no rules. Don't call me music man, motherfucker. Yeah. Joe, Ray, yeah. B. So, la, <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. I want to hear, I mean, you just got to hear the page of like Ice-T and KRS-One. I mean, because it sounds so freaking awesome to hear Ice-T. Hey, KRS do mine, do mine, do mine. No, I'm just kidding. Hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> But I gotta, I gotta get, what, it's like one of my favorite pages. Hold on, wait, 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 I feel like we're all in William's bedroom right now, just like hanging out, passing around the comic book. All right, wait, wait, here he goes, here he goes. So, okay, on the book it says parental advisory because there's bad words. So, if I, I'm sorry if there's a bad word. I just want to put it out there because, hold on, here's one that doesn't have bad words. So this is Ice T, read by Ice T and KRS One and Queen Latifah. So here it comes, right here. This will all be over soon. It can't be. You, you, you killed him. You killed my father, dressed as a crit. You always have kept the war on the streets going. Do it. He was just a pawn in a much bigger game. It was never personal. I don't even see a keyhole. It seems only followers of APEP may enter. Gotta try anyway. I prayed for this day. You prayed to the wrong God. Shit. Nah, motherfucker. 
You prayed to the wrong guy. Now that's how you take down the door. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> Wait, I want to show you an action scene. The action scene, this action scene is pretty, pretty sick. This action scene is so freaking sick. I mean, yeah, seriously, you've never seen action in a freaking comic book before? Check this out. Do this page. Yeah. <laughs> what the? Oh, hell yeah. We are one with the vibrations. We have become the weapons of power. Let's do this shit. Jimmy Guapo is in the motherfucking house. Ah! Hi, kids. <laughs> Sorry, kids. <laughs> Sorry, kids. <laughs> That's why it says parental advisory on the Marvel thing. <laughs> but it is so, I mean, Common. Common is another voice that, that's on, on the book. It's like so freaking amazing to, to, to see all this stuff come to life, man. I mean, seriously. That was dope. What was How that? many other Mar Marvel comics are like this? None, None right? So did we add to the culture? Did we contribute? Woo! Yo, Yo, check this one out. Well, can I add something? Yeah, go add, add, add. Yo, so, you know, I'm legally blind. Most of you don't know that. And the accessibility of the AR makes it easier for me to read the book and see the actions. Yeah. And then for all the, the blind kids and People with uh, visual impairment will be able to enjoy this book just like me. Woo! For anybody that ever had any question as to why Black Eyed Peas would do a comic book, I think we just showed them why. That is, <laughs> like, I got chills watching it for the first time and watching their Periscope feeds, the amount of hearts that started exploding as they saw the AR leap off the page. I've never experienced anything like that before. Damon, I gotta ask you, you're aware that they want to go to this level with the book. Does that change your style of drawing? Actually, I wasn't. Like, but what's kind of ill was that I unintentionally like, planted some stuff in there that they could make use of, you know, just because I do that anyway. But nah, man, this like, blows me away. I, I, I had no idea it was going to go to this level. Who thought of this? Like, whose idea was it to be like, and how do you present that to a team? Like, hey, I want to write a comic book, but I want it to leap off the page with an app. Okay, so as you know, I'm a little, you know, I, I dabble in a lot of different things here and there, from technology to philanthropy, and the Apple people are like friends of mine. So I did a show with Apple called Planet of the Apps. So like, I'm aware of like new technology before it hits. So I didn't want to be like, you know, a me too to the thing that's going to change the world all 2018, 19, 20. AR is going to change the world. So I knew about this like three years ago. And I just was, you know, when you know <coughs> something's coming, sometimes it drives you crazy because you want it to come quicker. So, you know, I would always hint to, 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 uh, to Damon and Ben like, yo, AR, we need to make sure that the stuff is ARable. So, you know, we ha it has to have the augmentality. So people are like, what are you talking about? I was like, no, you'll see, bro. It's going to be so fresh, dude. And so then my <laughs> business managers and all these folks are like, why are you spending this money? You know, because usually it's supposed to be a company doing it all. So I'm like, no, you'll see, man. I just met these guys They're from this company. We're going to work with them. We're going to do all this experimental stuff. So this was like experimental. And now the experiment is real. And I can't, you know, it's like, you know, it's, for me, as a fan of hip hop, a fan of like KRS One, to hear him like, you know, to hear KRS One when I put my phone over like this, like wait, wait, hold on, hold on, wait. This is my, this is my, this is like one of my favorite yeah. pages right here. Yeah. Oh. Hold on, here goes. Hold. On. It's Zulu X. Listen to this. A song is sung. The rhymes combined to the beating of drums. The lines from my mind will put you up under the earth and the dirt instead of under the sun. Shook niggas shiver like I'm shooting a gun. Took niggas a minute to admit I'm the one. One meaning cooler, one meaning cooler. Coming from the sewer, hallelujah, I'm speaking in tongues. And then, like, you get the, the, how fast it is. It's so fast, like how, See, how it picks up a scene, right? You, when, you're, when you're reading comments, you could actually have a party at your house when you read. <laughs> <laughs> 
Good one, Chad. <laughs> you <a> DJ. <laughs> yeah, so like it, 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 the way the way it picks up a, a page is so fast, like boom. Come on, Malik. Shit is fucked on the streets. Tell your guys to put down their guns and Zulu X will too. Not so sure about that, little Sterling. You got a lot of hardware. You expected a war? My guy figured we need it. Gotta keep the Crips in check. Good product always comes with a price. And I really do love my fucking toys. We never had hardware like that when I was serving over there. That's some next level shit. Actually. So who'd you get your hardware from? Some ill shit is going down and Z drop. You know how fast that is? We need to make Malik tell us who his supplier is. We find him, then we can find out what the fuck we need. I mean, did. come on, that is the craziest, right? Yeah. Oh. Seriously. I mean, I'm taking, I mean, seriously. I mean, I just... For so long, I wanted to come to grab to, to Comic Con to show you guys this, and like, just to see like, we we contributed to the culture, and and that's all we wanted to do was like to make something that takes it to the next level. So all you guys, next year when you come to Comic Con, you be like, I remember when Black Eyed Peas did that last year. <laughs> 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 we did that shit. That's awesome. I do want to uh, let you guys know, uh, towards the end of this panel, uh, we're going to save about 10 or 15 minutes for an audience Q&A. So if you guys want to line up, I believe we're going to have a microphone over there. Uh, if you guys want to start lining up now, um, I want to toss it over to the panel one more time because I do want to get Ben. I want to ask your take on when you heard about the technology that Will wanted to bring to the book. Does that change the writing process for you and the team? I mean, I don't think so at all. I mean, I think what was really exciting about so much of this was that, you know, w Damien and I always made this to be layered. And one of the first things Will and I talked about, like, when we first met was, like, let's make as many layers as we can. And we talked about, like, USB ideas and, like, website stuff and, like, putting things in the pages that you would, like, you know, Easter eggs. And there was a lot, like, Damien and I, we had ideas for some crazy Easter eggs that we didn't get to do in this book yet. So now knowing what we can do technologically, Book number two. Hey! Yeah. What? Yo. Did I just say that? <laughs> and wait, don't forget, we got hints to all the new technology. So guess what? Book number two, this is like so old school compared to like what book number two is going through. Like, I'm not even joking around. Book number two is like crazy. You could go in and you could live in the book. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm Become a character. <laughs> yes, he's like this every day. <laughs> we call him Elon Musk. <laughs> Will, do you know, what do you know about technology three years from now that we don't know? Like, are we going to be in Mars in three years from now? No. Um, so, <laughs> <laughs> so three three years from now, uh, I mean that's a really good really, really it's five years. So you do four year leaps, just like. Everything leaps in four years or, or, or couples of fours. Just like when you go to college, you graduate four years later. Just like every presidential election. It's like every Olympics. Everything is in four-year cycles. So right now, we're, you know, folks are, are designing and building for four years from now. And things, I've seen things that are, dude. <laughs> What's today? Saturday? Sunday? Tuesday last week. Some guys like your will, you gotta come. Meet me in Burbank. This is the craziest thing you've ever seen. I'm like, oh, I hear that all the time. And sometimes it's really not that crazy. But this time was the craziest thing I've ever seen. The guy's like, okay, put on this backpack. I put the backpack on. All right, put this helmet on. So okay, I put the helmet on. He walks me to this area where there's a door. He's like, okay. Now put the helmet over your head. And it just looked like, right, a regular thing. I open the door, and then the freaking walls start melting. And then, I, then, and then there's a gun there. He's like, pick, so, and then your head said, it's like, go pick up that gun. So I pick up the gun. Then these, these freaking monsters come, and I'm supposed to shoot them. 
and I'm shooting them. Obviously, they, they, you know they look, you know they look fake, but they look real. And I'm like blasting them with like these these mega blast things, and then the the only reason why you you shoot them because it's not reality that the walls are gonna melt. So that just gave me a hint that this is fake. Because <laughs> right, because then I would be in jail because <laughs> I just shot people. But the walls started melting. I'm like, what? And it looked real. I'm like, what in the world is this, man? So then you walking, I'm walking, I'm walking, and I'm hunting and looking for other monsters. And I'm blasting them. Then the floor starts, then I go into a freaking elevator, and it feels like I'm in an elevator. Then I get out the elevator, and the, I turn around, and the elevator falls down, and the freaking floor shakes. And it feels like it's really shaking. Then I go out, side, open the door, and I feel this gush of wind. I'm like, wow, and I felt the wind. Then this thing like comes and hits me, and it felt like it hit me. After I took off the helmet and the backpack, I'm in a room smaller than this room. And in my head, I was, I, I was doing it for 30 minutes. It felt like I walked a mile but I just was really wandering in something smaller than this room. <laughs> and I'm like, how did you guys do that? I felt wind. I was like, oh, the fans are there. It's like your mind will trick yourself. <laughs> that when you're in an environment, you think that you're really feeling wind. Those are fans. How was the floor shaking? They had some vibration on the floors. Why did it feel like I you know, was going up an ele elevator? It's just your mind tricks, but it's new age gameplay. So five years from now, you're gonna go to these amusement parks that are really convention centers. 10 years from now, we're all gonna be in Comic-Con wearing helmets. <laughs> and it's gonna be fantastic. I seen it, it is amazing. And the reason why, because they wanted to check out our property to build the world. World building to where you experience it like this stuff. I was blown away. I swear to you, I could share that with you because they said, hey, tell people as much as you want about what we're doing. Most people don't want me to tell them, but it is so freaking mind blowing. I think I speak for everybody in the room when you said you put on a helmet and a backpack. We thought you owned a jetpack. <laughs> <laughs> we thought you blasted off in outer space and you're the rocketeer, but it's a pretty cool story regardless. No, it is, I swear to you, I swear to you, I walked away like, what did I just experience? I have a memory of smell. I have a memory of a, of, of a room of melting walls, something I sat on. I had to move a chair from here to there, but it was all virtual, but physical. Like this mixed reality of like, I swear to you, App Tab, wow. when you guys go there, Damien and, and, and Ben, yeah. it is. <laughs> It, I look, what is it? Been on the watch? It's the most amazing thing in the world. You know, you know honestly, What's Mark, it, it, it sounds crazy, but it sounds like a crazy LSD trip. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> it sounds amazing. Uh, look, but, I just wow. want to put this out there. Scary. I happen to live in Burbank in case you need a buddy. Um, <laughs> I want to go to the q and I want to save uh, some time here at the end uh, for some of the fans here uh, joining us today. What's your name and what's your question for the panel? Uh, I'm Matt. So. I, I really do like this, and I do have to tell the comic book uh, club at my school about this when I go home. Uh, so the th I have a 3DS, and they have, like when you get it, they also give you AR, AR cards that you can use as well. Would this work, would that program work for the comic book as well, or do you have to download something specific? Yeah, so when, when, when this comes out, when the app comes out this holiday season, um, it'll be on iOS, it'll be on um, Android phones, it, but 3DS, like, play, uh, 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 what's 3DS? Uh, Nintendo. <laughs> Nintendo. The Nintendo thing? It won't be on that. Oh, okay. <laughs> but it'll be on iPhones and, and Samsung phones. I mean, uh, uh, Android phones. iOS and Android. Yeah, make sure you're following these guys on Twitter, too, because when it comes out, it's going to be released this holiday season. It's when you can get the app. You can pick up the book now, and then you can get the app a little bit later on this year and have your mind blown and blow your friends' minds as well. So th thank you for your question. Yeah, who's, you. Who's, uh, who's next? What's your name, and what's your question? Hi, my name's Naomi. Um, so my question is, um, 
for book two or any future kind of comic, um, what kind of technology would you want to enhance the experience? So book, that's an awesome question. So book two hopefully will be out next year before, before, um, before next year is over. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't want to put anything out there because <laughs> Damien and Ben would be like, "What? <laughs> be out before like, uh, <laughs> another <laughs> one? Um, like it'll be out next week." So of course we'll do AR, um, but we have announcements for this book, um, Master of the Sun, uh, Zombie Chronicles, um, at Comic Con LA. We have a different layer. So there's four layers to this. So the first layer is the book itself. <clears throat> the second layer is yeah. the AR. The third layer, I'm not telling Yay. you. The fourth layer, I'm not telling you. But <laughs> each layer is like, what? Yeah, it's, yeah. Calmate, <laughs> way. Yeah, so, it's, so, so yeah, it's like, it's multi-dimensional, four dimensions in Masters of the Sun, and the same will be for the next version of the book, but we'll have a fifth dimension for, uh, that's a group, by the way, and then the 60s, fifth dimension. <laughs> Just awesome. Cool, awesome. Thank you. Uh, what's your name? What's your question? My name is Nestor. Um, if you could have a crossover, who would it be with? If we could have what? A crossover. A what? Crossover. A crossover. Like a crossover. Like another character. Spider Man or X Men. Oh, 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 this could hey, crossover. Yeah, we could crossover with another <clears throat> team. Oh, Ooh. Yeah. That's a good question. Uh, um, I, I want to start this one. All right. I would like to see um, someone from the Marvel family, Red Wolf, who's actually coming back in December. Um, you know, got to keep those Native American heroes alive, you know what I mean? Yeah. I would like to, um, I would like to see uh, Zulu X rock out with Spider-Man. Because Damon Scott drew them both. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I can see that. That would be the illest. That would be dope. That would be That'd super be dope. dope. That would be, yeah. Damien, do you think your artistic style fits with, with combining a crossover universe like this, potentially? Oh, hell yeah. I'm classic and I'm hip-hop, so I murder that. <laughs> Yay. Thank you. You always got to get the guy drawing it to sign off on it before you can really go ahead. But that was, uh, that was a pretty ringing endorsement. Hi, what's your name? What's your um, question? Hello, my name is Lazaro. Um, my question is, uh, you know, with the huge uh, shift to uh, e-books, you know, like how all these comic books are going digital, uh, my question is, like, you know, how all of these companies like Garfield, Archie Comics are going digital, would... Uh, there be kind of like a digital version of like all the pop-ups in the ebook version of this book. Mm -hmm. Wait a second. Yeah. <laughs> You're taking my levels away. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that. No, <laughs> Next question. <laughs> to answer your question, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but you didn't hear it from us. <laughs> That would have been such a weird way to end the what panel. Are you, just the security no. team whisks this kid away. <laughs> like, like, like that, was a, that was a fun panel. And then what happened to that kid? We never saw him again. Great question, by the way. Keep him yeah. coming. Um, hi, you're up next. What's your name and what's your question? Um, my name is Samantha. And um, I want to know, like, what female character would you add if you had the chance to from Marvel or DC? Um, female character from Marvel. Oh, we got one. I would like to see... Zulu X date storm. Yeah. 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 And that's because uh, that would be awesome. <laughs> Anybody else want to jump in on that? Yeah, I want um, Big App to date Wonder Woman. Yeah. Oh. There, there's, a, there's a Puerto Rican. Um, uh, what? What is it? Man. Yeah, there it is right there. That I would want her to be part of this. Uh, you know, we, we definitely want to uplift the underserved. So I would say Boric Boricuana, Boricuana. Yeah, that's it. Puerto Rico. <laughs> Come on, you guys got to know the call and response. Let's try Puerto it again. Puerto Rico. 
there we go. <laughs> Filipino. Hey. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> Africano. <laughs> oh, there we go. <laughs> Comicano. Yeah. Oh, good one. That good one. Good. <laughs> All right, question. Sorry. Sorry, sorry. Next question. Please. Thank you very much. <laughs> Hi, my name is Lauren. Um, I was wondering, so you guys have like your layers planned out for like what can actually technologically happen right now. So if we fast forwarded like however many years and we don't know what the technology is going to be, but you have like your master of the sun empire, you're established, everyone's into it. What is like the biggest thing that you were like, if I could ever do this for this project, that's what I want to do. Theme park. <laughs> The biggest thing for this project, really, I saw it on Tuesday. I, I saw that on Tuesday, and to have been called by those folks, I'm sharing, because usually I wouldn't, I, mean, I would have said this in San Diego. Like we were, but I was so blown away that I, I don't know how to shut my mouth about what I saw on Tuesday. <laughs> so they're gonna be watching this. I can't wait to build put our world in what you guys are capable of doing because it's it looks like this it's awesome Thank you. one day all of our kids are going to want a season pass to will i am's warehouse amusement park <laughs> <laughs> hi what's your name what's your question all right, my name is Melissa, I love you guys, and thank you for doing this. And my question is, how much does this really cost? I'm pretty sure that's what everybody's thinking because it's Christmas coming up, so we gotta know how much to save. How much is the app gonna cost? Everything, like the app and oh, the book. Oh, so the book right now is, how much is the book? Twenty four ninety nine. dollars 24 dollars 24 dollars yeah. Right. <laughs> And the app is going to be less than that. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> we don't really know the pricing yet for the app, but it's traditional app, app downloads, anywhere from 99 cents to, you know, 4.99, something like that. I heard that from over there. Right. 4.99, yeah. Got to clap for that one. All right, cool. I want a free copy, but okay. <laughs> Hi, what's your name? Hi, oh, my hello. name's Jaden. What's your question for the panel, Jaden? Wait, um, who's your favorite villain? Huh? Who's your favorite comic book villain? Ooh. My favorite villain? Yeah. Ooh. From the sweetest little girl asking I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm really confused. <laughs> uh, my favorite villain would be... Snickers? <laughs> I don't I know because because I'm not supposed to eat sugar because it, <laughs> it makes me hyper. Um, my, my favorite. I don't have a villain favorite. I because I, I want villains to go you know to get devillainized. Um, um, Chabu, you go. Yeah, um, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say X Men uh, because he was in X Men, so I'm gonna go with Magneto. Oh yeah. I like Joker. That's my favorite Joker. Yeah. I'd probably say the Joker also. That's my dude. <laughs> Joker. Wait, I take it back. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, wait. My favorite villain is Vega because I played Vega in Street Fighter. <laughs> hey. Hey, hey. Vega. Uh, <laughs> those are pretty great villains. You got Magneto, the Joker, Cavities, all the ones that you're really afraid of. <laughs> Great cosplay. Oh, what is your name? What is your question? Uh, my name is Jeff, and I was wondering, how do you think it's going to cross over into the music industry? We're going to be able to do like music videos or anything related to the comics. Can you say? Can you say that again? How do you think it's going to cross over into like the music industry um, with the comics being blended with, with the music and artists and all that? Do you think it's going to open up new venues or new genres down the line for that, as far as music videos or anything else? bringing it to life. So the crossover is always, if you have a, if you have a, a heart and, and you're conscious about the obvious shift from music to a diff different medium, um, if you're conscious about it, it could be intimidating. Um, 
because you, you're aware that there's skeptics, cynics, and people think you should stay in your lane. Um, but that is the best way to approach it because then you're going to um, find it easier to collaborate because you're coming from a humble, um, down-to-earth approach. Because if you had success in one medium, the worst thing to do is bring that arrogance to a new medium and then you really do nothing. And, 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 and the, the product speaks for it. So I think because we came from the right place from, and, and uh, the right vibration in our hearts, it was, you know, people like Damon Scott made the experience an easy, amazing experience. People like Ben made it an easy, beautiful experience. And the result, Marvel, putting a stamp on our ambitions and, you know, intentions just made it, I, I, I couldn't have wished for a better example, uh, um, result. And lastly, I would wear that on stage. <laughs> I swear to God, I would wear that. <laughs> I could make you one. You look and not to like steer you. away from the subject, but there's a soundtrack to this book. So I. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Well, that, I, I think yeah, this is so to, to add to what Apple said, people were like, so what's the Black Eyed Peas? What are you guys going to do next? It's like, we're doing a graphic novel. And the record company was like, yeah, but we're your record company. We do music. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, <laughs> you know, we're going to do a graphic novel and we're going to score the graphic novel. So all the music that you heard in here, you know, is what the Black Eyed Peas <clears throat> contribution and the next... Um, installment of music is going to be. So I thought, you know, when we went to, when we went to score it, uh, Sean from Triggers, who's here, you know, that was the last thing that we did. He was like, so how long is it gonna take? I was like, oh, it's gonna take about an hour. I'll be done in an hour. It took like a month. <laughs> <laughs> and I swear to you, like, you know, the people that we collaborated with on this is a part of the fourth installment of uh, the, the, the fourth level, that layer that we announced at LA Comic-Con. Um, but this new Black IP music is deep. It's, you know, conscious talking about what's going on in our, in our community, in the world today. You know, there's not like pop songs for pop song's sake. You know, we're, we, we went back, reversed, and went to the earth and made awesome, emotional, thought-provoking music that goes with, you know, the story that's here, the through line, what's take back your inner city, take back your community, you know, drug peddling and drug abuse, whether it's, you know, um, intentional, whether it's the conspiracy theories ring true with CIA planes bringing drugs and weapons into our inner cities in the 80s, like fighting back and getting our community back, like all this music is that. Yeah, and, and as Apple said earlier, um, it feels like when we first put out our first album, because we took it back to the basic uh, hip hop roots, and that's why it's a blessing to have you know legendary hip hop artists be part of this. Yeah. yeah. So uh, there, I, I love. Uh, I, hold on, hold on. Wait, wait, wait. There was a boot camp up in the studio. It was like line for line. Like, can I eat? Uh, wait, you gotta finish your lyrics. Uh, I mean, it was like it's one of the, like the, I think our best album. Yeah. 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 And like I said, to have Marvel put a stamp and put out our book yeah. had to be like legit for real, for real. You know, the, 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 the best artists, the best writing for Marvel to put that out. To have Rakim, Common, KRS-One, Slick Rick, Boom. Ice-T, Raekwon, all these folks, L, um, 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 you know, Mary J. Blige and Queen Latifah, Stan Lee, Michael Rappaport, like the music had to talk about things that are happening. Like, I love I Got a Feeling, those songs are great, but that's not the Snoop Black IP record. The Snoop Black IP record is Where's the Love and Where's the Love's and Where's the Love. Yep. Uh, guys, Thank you. unfortunately, we only have time for one more question. What? Group, group huddle, make a collection. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> No, serious. Drop the questions, go ahead. <laughs> Hi, my name is Louis. Um, I'm a huge fan of your music. Um, 
my question for you guys is, um, with the creation of this comic book and what you guys are contributing, uh, do you guys see anything in the future for like a, a new like a contribution to like the television world or the film um, universe? You know, for either with Marvel or without. <laughs> is there anything in the future like that? Um, That's one <laughs> thing we're not gonna do. It's never gonna be a TV show. It's never gonna be a film. It's never gonna be a play on Broadway. It's never gonna be T-shirts. We're never gonna do dolls. Oh, <laughs> we're never gonna do video games. Wait. We're never gonna do sneakers. We're never gonna do tissues and napkins. <laughs> never do paper towels, forks, knives, and party utensils. We're not doing any of that stuff. That's it. <laughs> I think I think we need thank one you. more quick question. And thank, thank you. We've got time for one more quick question. So. Hi, my name is Soraya. Um, my question is, what's in the box? Oh! <laughs> so in the box are these awesome, like, Bluetooth buttons that are Master of the Sun. Like, so you have, like, these awesome, like, like this, Ooh, but headphones. these. So, like I said, we, we, we did this ourselves. Like, we didn't, you know, we're not. <laughs> oh! <laughs> So, we can't throw a box. <laughs> if it hits her, she'd be like, well, I am hitting you in the air with a box of Bluetooth buttons. I was just trying. So yeah, so they're Bluetooth, Bluetooth, um, Master of the Sun branded uh, earphones. Buttons are pretty awesome. So we'll do like, um, we're gonna do a break dancing contest and the winner wins it. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Thank you. Wait, does this mean I get one since I asked the question? Go, him like <laughs> hey, she has one last question. Go ahead. No, I said, does this mean I get one since I asked the question? <laughs> <laughs> huh? Oh, do you want? Oh, because you asked the question. Oh, that's right. Um, yeah. You want to come up and get it? <laughs> Who did you come here with? Who did you come here with? Oh, yeah. There's your hey, cousin. Chantel. That's awesome. Oh, wait, we got a credit card swiper right here. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, that's cool. No, 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 no. We, we, only have, we only have a gift for one question. Sorry, sorry. Hey, how are you doing? You oh. look like Storm. <laughs> hey, how are you? Can I talk to you? This is like the best way to close out the panel. You guys, you got free Black Eyed Peas headphones. I'm so, I feel like such a good person for saving time for one more question because she wouldn't have gotten headphones if I didn't. So, I'll take that. That's a pretty good job. I want to thank, ladies and gentlemen, Black Eyed Peas, Damien, Ben. Give him a hand. Thank you guys for joining us here today. Make sure you guys check out Masters of the Sun in all forms later this year.